computer. Okay. And then we go. Then I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. Share. Okay. I believe it's being recorded now. It, yep, it looks like it is. Uh, so, we have to continue, Mary, because we got a meeting being recorded dialog box in the middle here. So, I'm sorry. There's a this meeting is being recorded dialog box right in the middle of the screen. Is okay. that okay? Can you acknowledge that box, Doug? Huh? I think you can click on that. That you're, that's a message to you, isn't it? It's a private recording. Like, well, I just did, but uh, I don't I, have it. Yeah, that's an individual message that everybody should be getting, I think, right? Oh, okay. That's a yeah, you click awareness. to continue. Okay. If you, if you continue, you acknowledge. I yeah. got it too. Okay. <clears throat> well, welcome to Key Elements to a Realtor's website. And um, I'm Marianne Aschenbrenner, and I haven't built a lot of Realtor's websites, but I have a, a couple examples to show here. And um, also to talk about what a, a realtor really needs to have on their website. So um, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Next. Okay, so the highlights that we're going to go over today. First, I want to talk about why you need a website. A lot of times the realtor will have a one page on a larger company's website uh, that they are a broker for. Well, you need more than that, just you need a better presence than that, uh, than that offers you. Um, then I'm gonna talk about five critical components to any website, which is kind of general, but I mean, people sometimes forget some of these things. And then we'll go into some specifics that uh, a broker or, or a realtor needs, um, reflecting who you are, FAQs, testimonials, and potentially proper listings. And then I'll do a little bit of talk about SEO, how you can own search results for your name. So oftentimes for a realtor, owning the search for results for your name of really, um, as long as people are looking for you by name, that's a good way to find you. And you wanna make sure those show up. So let's go to the next one. Okay. So this is a client of mine, Shana Denny. And I did just a basic Google search for Shana Denny. And as you can see, she owns the results of this page. Uh, she is a part of realtor.com, real estate agents that's some sort of listing service. She actually runs her own company. So she's not, it's not the name of her company. She has her Facebook page up there. Uh, her name of her company is Polaris Realty Northwest. So where the homepage comes up. And then the Shana Denny page of Polaris Realty Northwest comes up. So that's something you're want, going to want to have if you have a real estate site is to have a page that just has your name on it. Uh, her LinkedIn profile comes up and you got some images of her. Then on the right hand side, you have a Google My Business results. And um, that shows the area she traditionally works in and it links to her website. Uh, you can call her on that. And so that's another, another thing you wanna have. And we'll talk about getting a Google My Business listing later. But before we do that, let's talk about what you wanna have in a website. So number one, you need it to be accessible. And we've done, we could do, we can talk for an hour just on accessibility. And in fact, we have, we've done seminars on just accessibility before, but I'm gonna talk about a few very uh, high level, just looking at it. Um, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. So when they see, say perceivable, um, they mean like text alternatives, colors, foreground, background that are distinct from each other. I sometimes put it this way. Text alternatives are where you have a something called an alt tags, alternative text written for every image. So when you upload an image to a website, there is an alt tag that you can add to that. And I have clients who forget to do that. And I say to them, 
do you think that 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 our our sidewalk should be handicap available so that a person in a wheelchair or on a scooter can get up onto the sidewalk at the corners and they always say yes yes we should have that, that available so people can get around say so, well then why would you not put an alt tag on your images it's really the same thing um, it allows somebody who maybe doesn't have great internet service it'll show what that image is there'll be a little text there that says what it is if it doesn't come up and for people who are blind or vision impaired, it's a lifesaver because their screen readers will actually read that and tell them what that image should say. And also Google really likes seeing those. And if your website's not accessible, uh, you're gonna be downgraded in Google. So always put those alt tags on your images. Um, Colors, when you put up colors, think about is somebody who's vision, who is colorblind going to be able to, to see this text on top of this background? You know, if you have a green background with blue text, it's possible they won't be able to read it. So um, always consider those, that. And there's sources online to, to get more information about colors and, and uh, font sizes and so forth. Um, operable. That means is the navigation simple? Are the buttons clear? Um, user friendly navigation is just don't mess with that. Because <laughs> if somebody can't get around their site on your site, they're going to leave it. Um, also, you want the the uh, the things on the web page to be keyboard accessible and have your buttons clearly labeled and big enough so that if they're on a cell phone, it can still be touched. Um, a good theme should give you this. And I know any WordPress, any good WordPress theme is going to be fully accessible. Um, one more thing I should say is do not design content in ways that is known to call, cause seizures. And I know that's kind of a weird thing to say, but Back in the day, people would put flashing things on the, on the flashing colors on their website or something like that and think it was cool. It wasn't cool. It actually could cause seizures in certain people. Plus it's just irritating to everybody else. So don't, you know, avoid that. Is it understandable? We, can users understand it and read the information as well as the operation of the user interface? And usually you want to check that by having friends or acquaintances look at your website and, and you just watch them as they negotiate through it. Uh, and finally, robust, is it, does it maximize compatibility with current and future user agents, including assistive technologies? Assistive technologies might be screen readers, might be um, uh, other things that help people who are, who are disabled in one way or another to be able to use the internet. And so you definitely want to make sure that your website is technically robust enough to be able to handle that um, both now and in the future. Okay, five critical components for any site. Number two, call to action. Uh, there are many ways to write and design this, but just make sure it's there. And I, I am a firm believer that every website needs to reflect the owner. And so if you're the kind of realtor who's like, uh, call me today, I'll get you in a home tomorrow, then have that in your call to action. And if you're the kind of realtor who's like, call me today and we can discuss your housing needs in the future, then say that. Have it reflect you personally and how your attitude is. Don't try to mimic someone else that's not you. Okay, contact information and include a hyperlink phone and email. Make it easy so when people are on a cell phone, they can just click a button. So if you look up there on the right, it says connecting your customers you to you or with you and there's my phone number and there's my email address. And you can click that phone number or click that email address and call me or send an email. 
And I have two pictures of what I did on the back end to make that happen. So basically WordPress has like a, um, an editor uh, that makes it easy to build the website from the back end. So every block is a new block of content. And you can see under that a bottom left image connecting your customer with you kind of big, there's a kind of a backwards P that means paragraph. And so that is the block that has the, my phone number in it. And all I did was highlight it and then hit that link button that you see this black up there. And if you look, it's, I wrote in TEL colon and then my phone number. So that's the secret. You just, it's TEL colon, write in the phone number, save it. And then that will be a hyperlink that people can uh, call. And the same thing with the email, only with that it's mail to, M-A-I-L-T-O colon, and then the actual email address. And it becomes a hyperlink. So you should always have that. Let's go to the next one. Um, looks great on mobile, check and recheck. And I think that this is, cannot be overstated. People are on their cell phones and that's where they're gonna be looking for you. So always make sure your mobile site looks great and does everything you need. And often with the modern uh, good themes, it's gonna be perfect, but sometimes there's little differences. And if there are, um, you're gonna to wanna to fix it, especially if it's something you don't wanna have uh, on there. I have a client in uh, Maui who uh, has a uh, charter boat business and I built her website and I thought everything was perfect. There was one page that had uh, a booking software on it that looked a little bit different for her than it did for me. And it took us a while for me to duplicate that and fix it, but Again, she was checking and rechecking and she found something. And you should do the same, whether you build your site yourself or you have somebody else do it for you, you still wanna check and recheck it and make sure that everything on the mobile is, is copacetic and just as good as it is on the laptop or desktop. Um, number five, well-written content. I can't say this enough. Make sure that it flows by reading aloud, listen to yourself talk, and you'll send, understand how it flows. Show it to friends or colleagues and ask for feedback. And ultimately, it's a good idea to pay a professional to proofread it. You may not have a ton of content, but they can catch stuff that maybe should have been worded better or where you misspelled something or, or have a comma in the wrong place. I mean, there's a lot of little rules to grammar and you just want it to be as professional as possible. Okay, specifics for realtors and, and brokers. I firmly believe your website needs to reflect who you are. Um, when people meet you in person, they should go, oh yeah, this is who I expected. It shouldn't be something completely different. And I don't mean just by your picture on the site, I mean the vibe of the site, the feeling of the site. Um, if you love the color pink, put some pink on the website. You don't have to overdo it, but put some pink on there because that's your favorite color. Uh, if you want a very, I have a very, uh, masculine feel or vibe to you, then make sure your site reflects that. It's okay. Um, if you are, I should say there's a couple small things to keep it caveats to this. If you're a realtor who's working for another agency and you want to have a website for yourself, as well as of course that web page that they have at the agency, they will want you to use their colors and their logo on your website. And that's okay. You can do that and still make that website reflect you by what you put in the about page, by including your credentials, uh, by your image. Um, sometimes they even want you to use the same font they're using, which is not hard to do, um, but it's okay to make a website that 
you, you know, is, is uh, Mary Jane Realtor dot com for, you know, Oregon First or some other real estate company. Um, that is how you get yourself up in the search results for, for your name. Okay, storytelling leads to brand loyalty and yes, you are a brand. I'm gonna talk about a personal experience. Um, it's hard to write about yourself, even if you have an English degree, which I do. <laughs> and um, on my website, I have a page about Mary Ann and I had written you know, a reasonable little bio there It told what I did. Uh, I was asked by a, a blogger to do a podcast with him. And so as part of the podcast, he asked me what I, how I got into web design. And so I was really able to sit back and tell him what drove me to be a web designer and how that was a part of my working with my community and how it involves saving uh, a, a, an outdoor pool <laughs> that's you know still open today because of the work we did. And you know it was a nice story. And when I listened to that podcast later, I said, that should be my about page. Because my compared to what I said in the podcast, my about page sucked. So basically I took that interview transcribed it and put it on the about page. And I know people read it, even though it's kind of long, I know they read it because people will mention it when they call me. They'll say, oh yeah, you, where is Pier Park anyway? You know, they'll, want, they'll ask questions about it. So I know they read it. And um, I haven't touched it in probably two years or so. Haven't updated it, but I don't need to. It kind of says why I got into this business and that's not really going to change. So um, my recommendation is have someone interview you and record the interview. Ask, have them ask you questions specific like, why did you get become a realtor? Uh, what sort of people do you like to work with? What motivates you in this business? And you'll have answers there when you're talking to someone that are better than when you're trying to write them down. So, um, and then transcribe that. I know Google has a voice, uh, voice to text option of some kind. Transcribe it, edit it, put it on your website. Okay. Specifics, realtors and brokers. Okay, FAQs and testimonials. And there's a plugin for that. Of course there is. So. I, I think that FAQs could be really helpful for people to help, help their websites come up. I have another client who is a contractor and we added an FAQ page to his website and it is the first page that comes up in search results now for all kinds of searches. Um, testimonials are great because that gives you uh, street cred. People, oh, really? they said nice things about them. So I'm gonna talk about these three plugins, Yoast SEO, Yoast FAQ Accordion, and Easy Testimonials. So the Yoast SEO plugin is really a search engine optimization plugin. You're going to want to use that on your website. And you're going to want to, to it's very easy to do, to uh, optimize each page, have keywords for it, uh, your about page be optimized to your name. And um, all the Yoast FAQ accordion does is, is and so anyway, once you have the Yoast SEO on there, you can add other boxes. And so other boxes into include the FAQ, the Yoast FAQ uh, box, where you can add a question and then uh, put the answer underneath it. So uh, I'm gonna give some examples of that right now. Oh, I should say one more thing. Because it's Yoast, schema is built into there. And you don't need to know what schema is, just know that Google looks for schema and schema tells Google what something is. So if you have ever uh, plugged in a question into Google search and an answer came up immediately, 
that was taken off of somebody's website. And that website probably had schema on that question. So Google knew what the question was and what the answer was, and it knew that person was searching for that for a question like that. And that's why it turned that up. So uh, the Yoast is very good for that. And easy testimonials also include schema. Uh, Google can tell that that is a testimonial. It can tell what the testimonial is about, and it can tell uh, if it got a five star or a four star or one star. So let's go on to the next one. Here's FAQ. So on the left hand, kind of in the back of this picture, you see FAQs is building a new home expensive in Hawaii, and then there's a plus sign. How many does new construction cost on Maui, a plus sign, et cetera. The reason there's a plus sign is because I added the FAQ, the Yoast FAQ accordion. If I didn't have that, it would just have a question with the answer below it. In the front of this image here, I have it in the front, is the back end of the website. And FAQs is, of course, the uh, H1 tag on there. And there is a full question and answer written out. <laughs> so once you add the Yoast FAQ box in, it just at the bottom of this series of questions, there's just a plus sign. You click the plus sign and new questions can, can come. You just write in new questions there. It's, it's very easy how, how it goes. Testimonials. This is the testimonials plug I mentioned, easy testimonials. Um, the first top image is a screenshot from a client's website. They sell um, uh, cleaning agents, all sorts of different cleaning agents. And so this particular plugin also includes the, the schema markup automatically. And you can put either a series of testimonials like this from the home page. It has six or eight testimonials. Or on the bottom image, you see another one that says testimonials, oil flow 141. That is on that one page. It's just a singular testimonial. You can use either or with that. And, and both of these, all these plugins are free, which is great. And this is how the easy testimonials is set up. Um, Titan green and that and trade is just simply a registration mark um, that comes out as a registration mark when people view the website. Recommendation. Okay, so you see a client name on the left, testimony information, and then the position that says where they are, and then what it is that's being reviewed, and it got a five star rating. And then on the right, you can see I connected it with Titan Green. So, and if I wanted to put a series of testimonials on the Titan Green page of this website, I can do that right there. Or if I want to display it singly, it gives the code to display that singly down below. That single underscore testimonial ID 2657. Okay, property listings. Keep it simple or bring in a plugin to give more info. So this is an example from a client. She keeps it simple. She has a page called listings. It's featured listings. She puts in the address. She puts in a picture of the property. She puts in a short paragraph of description. And that's it. And when it's sold, that pending changes to sold. And when it's pending, it's pending. Right now, properties are selling so fast. It's like, do you even need to list it on your page? Maybe you should, though. I think you should. But you can also get a lot more involved. And you don't need a plugin for it. Um, we could add, a, uh, for example, a Google Maps link in here and have it have, have a little map that shows them where the property is actually located and they can click it and get directions. Uh, we could have a series of images in here if we wanted. Uh, put a slider, maybe one main image and then a whole bunch of images down below that they can just click and see all the property images. You don't need a plugin for any of that. Um, but 
you could add a plugin as well. And I haven't used this plugin, but it's well rated. I've thought about using it. And a static real estate plugin. And it seems to do a lot of cool things. So if I design a website for a realtor again, I'll probably try this out. They have a professional version, but they also have a free version to test it out. And that might be all you need is a free version. If you do use a plugin on your website, I want you to note a few things. Um, where it says last updated three weeks ago, that's great. You want an up, a plugin that's updated and kept fresh and kept current. Look at active installations, it says 6,000 plus. Okay, that's not bad, that's good. Uh, you wanna make sure it has good testing with, with, and also ratings. If you look down, it has 127 five-star ratings. So, and it, then see, I didn't include it in the picture, but how many one-star ratings too. There's also another box down below that'll say if uh, problems have been solved, issues that have come up, how many have been solved. So that kind of gives you an idea on if you want to install it. If it, for example, hadn't been updated in nine months, and it only had uh, you know, maybe a quarter of the ratings were five stars and a lot were three or two or one stars, I wouldn't put it on my website. So that's you know just a word to the wise if you're ever adding a plug into the website. Okay, any questions so far? We've covered a lot of stuff so far. Any questions so far on what we've gone through? Doug, is there anybody who's raised their hand? Um, I think Doug Noyle. Doug Noyle, what's your question? It is I, yes. Um, <laughs> I've missed um, you, by the way, Doug. What do you mean you missed me? I missed you not seeing you at our meetups. Oh. I mean, I mean uh, like in person. Oh, gotcha. Here. I miss yeah, that. I miss everybody, too. Um, I got to admit, though, I... I get to go to more of them virtually than I would physically. So I, I really hope we get to do the hybrid thing, but uh, really? so I will study that for us. Uh, I had a question on uh, when you showed the listings and you're, are you uh, manually posting all those or do you have uh, some I kind of custom field set up for your client to fill out or? I just, I taught her how. It's very simple because everything is just a block. So all she has to do is add uh, probably it's probably an H2 or H3 with the address. And she knows how to change the color and then she knows how to upload an image. And I do have an image optimization uh, plug in on this website. So because, you know, you can't trust a client to upload a, a properly sized image. They just take it on their phone and upload it. So. Right. Um, so it's uh, it's 100 percent manual. You're not using. ACF for any like the sale pending or any of the other fields or anything no, like that. No, I'm okay. not using any ACF on this. Uh, and do you know how many listings she typically has? Average uh, thing? Uh, you know, she is is been a, she's on maternity leave right now, but she typically has one or two going at a time. Okay. Neat. Thank you. Yeah. So, but it doesn't, I mean, this this wouldn't take her more than 10 minutes probably to upload. When she when she took her picture and put it up and I mean it'd take her longer to write the the paragraph of copy I think than to actually put this on her website and if you scroll down to her listings page all she does is is add sold <laughs> you know after she doesn't delete it she just puts sold above it and adds something else to the top did you drop the uh, URL somewhere uh shana it's um polaris realty northwest okay or you could look look up shana danny and she'll she'll, she'll be there and uh I, I think you mentioned in the comments on the meetup are you going to cover a little bit about when they ask you to connect with their third-party systems and whatnot yeah in fact if you see that click here to view all active listings and search for new properties, 
that is her connection to third party listings, but it's broken. I just sent her an email and told her that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you could, you could, you could easily connect it to your, to your third party. When I started with, with Shana, she actually worked for another real estate agency, a big one in, in Portland. And, um, we built her first website. It was Realtor Shana Denny PDX because her name, Shana Denny, was also being used by a realtor in Texas. <laughs> so she had to find something to differentiate it. And that's what she, you know, she put the PDX on it. And um, I went to the, the uh, company website that she was part of and we got the color off that and they sent her a logo she could use and we picked a font that looked very much like her company's website might have been the same font and um, it looked like her like the company website it really looked a lot like it only it featured her and it had a page optimized with her name on it and had an about page and it and it, it featured her and uh, no other realtors, <laughs> just, just Shana. And then uh, maybe three or four years ago, she decided to uh, start her own brokerage, Polaris Realty, and she has a couple brokers working for her now. And uh, so this is off that, that website. It's a very simple website, but it reflects her. Um, if, if she was, if, you know, she was somebody that says, I want to grow a big real estate company. I want 30 or 40 people under me. It would be a different kind of website. It would, it would look different. It would have a different vibe to it, but that's not really what she wants to do. She's good at what she does. She gets business and referrals and she just needs a good web presence. And so that her website does what, it, what, what she wants her to do at this time. Any other questions? No. No. Okay, we'll keep going on. Okay, so this is a little bit about how you could own your own search results for your name. So buy your name as a domain or something close. So if your name is taken, then put a PDX on it or a North Portland on it or, or Oregon on it something that, um, or maybe uh, you'll be able to find a dot, dot, a realtor dot, uh, I mean, a realtor and then your name. Um, I like the dot com names. I think they uh, uh, have a higher rating, but I do know that people can buy dot realtor now. And so it, that might be another option is to buy your name dot realtor if you're name.com has already been taken. Uh, make sure that one of the pages in your website is optimized for your name, your full name. Uh, register with Google My Business and with Bing too. And have accounts with other real estate associations, organizations that um, are well received and, and uh, what's the word I'm thinking about? Rated highly because Google knows who those are. And if you're associated with them, that's gonna help you come up as well. So how to set up a Google My Business account. Um, and this is actually goes for anybody in business. So <laughs> uh, you go to googlemy.com business and select manage now. First, well, first of all, you have to have like a Google, a, a Gmail account of some kind. Enter your business name, business location, service area, and choose your business category. You don't have to put in your actual address. Well, you will, they will want your address, but if you say, I, I don't service out of this building, I service this service area, then um, they will respect that and what'll show up is the service area you serviced. Add a contact phone number and a website URL. So that's why you build your website first. And then you complete your Google verification. And uh, the easiest way to do it is to have them send you a postcard. They send you a postcard. You, it will have on it a code. You log into your website and you, and I'm sorry, back into google.com business. And you put that code on it and they consider you verified at that point. 
Any questions on setting up a Google My Business account? No. I should say that once you have one, you can also post on it. That's not a bad idea. If you, you know, if you have a new listing, post it on Google My Business. Um, you get a promotion at work, post it on Google My Business. It's okay. And now I have questions and answers. And I think that's what we have now. Any Q&A from people? None? None? Uh, Doug Ryder. Yeah. Hey, Marianne. Uh, so what theme did you use for this? Was it a specific realty theme or is it uh, your uh, 2021 or? For Shana's website? Yeah. I used, it was a, um, I built hers like two or three years ago and I used uh, a Studio Press theme. Yeah, they do have a lot of uh, realty uh, themes over yeah. there on Studio Press, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, she's on maternity leave right now. I think at some point she'll want to update her website, but she's happy with it for now. So, um, and, it, you know, if it depends on the person. You uh, Somebody may want to have a real estate kind of theme and have that vibe to their website. And, but she's a really laid back um, kind of person and kind of realtor. And, and that's not really what she wanted. She, she picked her theme, she picked what she wanted and, and uh, she's happy with it. So, but again, somebody else may pick something different. It's, it's good that she has a unique spelling on her first name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a pretty unique first name. Yeah. Um, any other questions? So has anybody used that uh, particular plugin, the ecstatic real estate plugin? Okay. Well, then I'll probably be the first. <laughs> What does it do for you? What does that plugin actually do? Well, I, you know, I think you could do a lot of it without it, but I think it creates a template so that when you add new properties, it'd make it pretty easy for a, a client to just plug in what they wanted to plug in. I'm, I'm guessing that's what it does. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I had put up, I had a realty, uh, client you know seven years ago and it, we chose a theme off of theme forest of course back in the day uh and it was a realty theme and it came with a built-in uh, property listing so you could actually just drop in your property listings with the images gallery you know square footage how many you know car two car garage one car garage all the little detail stuff that you had it's kind of painful to actually do that for every property that you listed but you know that was the that was back in the day Nowadays, I think that stuff is selling so fast, you really don't need to list it. <laughs> yeah. Put it on MLS, and by Monday, you've sold it. <laughs> it's like we'd also connected up with the MLS on that, and that was that was a very painful thing to go through. Uh, it's it's hard to brand, um, you know, from your website to what the MLS is is doing because the MLS is just feeding you data and they really don't allow you to uh, change it much. It, it's basically MLS listing. Right. Yeah. So I didn't even bother with that. Yeah. I don't know people that do that much with it as, as today, you know, back in the day it was. But, so she, she stopped being a realtor and now she's working for Redfin and she's managing other Redfin realtors. So. <laughs> okay. okay, good. I have a couple comments. They're more like general discussion topics, not really a here or there. Okay. But here in Spokane, I think we have like 3,200 real estate agents and maybe 150 homes available. It's, it's uh, not good for them at all. When I saw this posted, I got to thinking, okay, well, I know a lot of real estate agents over the years and they move around a lot. And I'm thinking that they should have their own personal website, even if they're affiliated with like Windermere or some big uh, real estate brokerage firm, because 
if you they can create their own identity and brand, they can preserve that. They can still link to their company. But I don't know that if you're in the real estate business and you work for a brokerage, they may not let you do that, right? They do let you do that. I, I think it would be good for both entities, but this is a way to kind of create your own brand, which we were talking about, which I think is a great point. But if you end up going from one brokerage to another, you can just change the colors and fonts and match up. Exactly. And okay. it's not that hard. Once you have the content up there, adding a different logo and changing some colors is pretty, um, you know, maybe an hour, two hours worth of work, you know? Okay. So that's the general point you were making earlier. And that's how I took it. I just want to make, uh, make sure I was getting that. And I, I agree. I, I think it's actually pretty easy to do this. I think this is a, it's not just real estate. You can do this across many industries, but creating your own personal website and your own personal brand to kind of protect your own, presence in the marketplace because mm -hmm. you know real estate agents they move around brokers lawyers they all move around right so. it tech move around a lot yeah. of different businesses move around you yeah know? yeah so. and and you should have a uh my daughter is getting her doctorate and i created a website for her her husband is is a student he's an art student and He's, I'm going to be making a website for him. You know, it's kind of like an online resume in their cases. And that's okay. It'll, if it helps them out, getting a job, then so much the better. Yeah, I always feel like the websites are the modern day yellow pages. They are. You yeah. know, from 20 years ago, 30 years ago, pretty tough to be in business if you don't have yellow pages and you had to pay through the nose to get a yellow page patch. Way, way more than it probably should have cost it. Right. Now... If you want to be in business, you have to have a website, right? Yeah, it has to be. So So anyway, thanks for the presentation and thanks for the information. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Okay. Any uh, other Doug questions? Noyle? Yeah. Doug Noyle has got his hand up. Yes. Um, so I was looking at the site and I noticed uh, um, like when you go to the listings and you click on the pictures, um, it pops into a third party picture uh, site. Okay. Which is neat because uh, what, what my question is, did she already use that or did you kind of guide her to bring that in and start using that? I told her how to do that. Okay, so she didn't know about Home Snap, home snap to begin with? She, well, I think that... So in other words, when they don't know when you're first starting this site, they would tend to ask you to create that kind of a system. But a, a site like HomeSnap already exists and it's a, you know, that that's a involved web app, so to yeah. speak. Um, and they just upload the pictures and it does all kinds of stuff with them. So I was just wondering for, from your, pers your perspective, do you guide her to use that type of stuff or was that something she was already using? That, that's kind of what I was asking. That's, probably, that's something she was already using. Okay. But I showed her how to, how to link the images. It sure, it sure makes it convenient. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. And, I, and you know, I think that uh, having it linked to the MLS listing would be really valuable for people too. If they, you know, if, the, if they're, uh, even if it's just houses that they aren't listing themselves, but they really like, and they'd like to sell, because of course, it isn't just a listing agent that sells the house, it's a person who brings in the buyer. Um, it's okay to say, hey, favorite homes, and here's your listing on it, and then you could link it to the MLS listing. Um, and that, that works too. yes yeah hi mary uh thank you you mentioned that google my business now it's probably something i should have known about but i don't um is that the thing when i go on a like a google map and uh, touch on a on a site uh it says you can claim your claim this business is that the same kind of a information yes let page? me stop the share one second here and i, will I mean, it sounds interesting you. i 
Uh, I will, I will, I'm going to screen share, but I'm going to go into one second here. Stop that. I'm going to go into, give you an example, because I think it really is easy. And I want people to know how to use it. Okay, so I'm going to screen share again. Okay, share. So this is my Google, my business account. And it says I serve all of North America. <laughs> and it says um, that I'm closed because I'm only open uh, nine to four, Monday through fr uh, Friday, apparently. Um, I can edit my own business information. This comes up because Google knows I'm logged into this website. I mean, to this page right now. But for other people, this would be the first result that would come up. Okay. These are posts that I've put in to Google My Business. When I talked about other things that, uh, you know, you can post on there. So I recommend you get a Google My Business account. Yeah, and it is that thing that the, when it says, do you own this business? If your business is coming up in Google My Business that finds information on the internet and brings that research results up. So even if you don't have a Google My Business account, you may have a Google My Business <laughs> that shows up in search results. And in which case you need to claim it. So you do that by first having some sort of Gmail address and then, and then logging in and creating and claiming that business. If, if you see it come up, claim it. And it'll, you know, you'll have to prove where you live and it'll send you a postcard and, and it, it'll, it's not immediate, it's not instant, but um, it's very helpful. Uh, uh, the contractor in, uh, in Maui, I do Google My Business posts for him and uh, they've helped him because it comes up in search results. So Doug Ryder, you have a question. Yeah, in regarding the Google My Business, does it require an actual Gmail address or can you use yes. like your domain name, your own domain name? I think it requires a Gmail address. I could be wrong, but I think it does. Okay. Or the maybe, uh, maybe the listing does. itself does not require Gmail. It's just, it's a, it's, it's a Google My Business is one of the Google products that you have access to because you have a Google account. If you choose to look at your Gmail or if you choose to look at Google Docs or whatever, that it's that kind of an ilk. So it's just one of the Google products. So, so you, you log into it with your Google credentials, but what you put into your listing can be anything. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Douglas, did I finish answering your question? Uh, you're, you're on mute. Okay, the, the follow on is that uh, that big box featuring your business on the right, is, is that one that can show up sometimes in searches as yes. a freebie advertising for you? Yes. That, okay. And is Bing that, has one too. So register on Bing also. Yeah. Oh. Do not discount Bing. Okay, uh, it doesn't get the search, you know, many search traffic as Google does, but Bing gets searched. And uh, it's, you know, it comes in with every business, for every, every company that has a, as a uh, PC has Bing on it. So I know it gets used. And that, I saw something recently, uh, send money to your favorite charity with each search on a, on a Bing account. I was like, oh, because that's going to attract certain people. <laughs> They're thinking. So uh, we can continue. I'm going to stop the recording because I don't think we need that anymore. So pause or stop recording. I got 